Because <laughs> in the SEC world, he's exactly – listen, he might not be the hero we want, but he's the hero we need. Yes, I think, I think you're probably right about that. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's dive off of that one. Um, let's go into Chris Sims, former NFL quarterback. He was the quarterback at Texas. He's got a radio show. Every year he does his top 40 NFL quarterbacks. And, you know, obviously his ranking is always a little different. And, and you know, I understand that. Oh, uh, the Brown Yeti said, I wouldn't mind that T. And uh, Michael said, sign me up for that T-shirt. So, we got guys interested. I, th- I think we could probably come up with a pretty good design. I think we'll do that. Yeah. Um, so, the big story today is on his radio show, he started discussing why he has Jared Stidham ranked ahead of Tua Tagovailoa. He doesn't even have Tua in his top 40. Uh, he's got Joe Burrow at 26, Stidham at 35. Um and people were asking, like, really, Stidham over, you know, over Tua? Like, why Why is that a thing? What are you doing? It, it is weird to me that they pick Stidham out because there's a lot of guys that he ranked that yeah. he, and he didn't rank him. It's, it's not like Stidham was, you know, 38 and Tua was 39, and so now you're, we're working on, you know, one or the other. Well, the reason, the reason it was uh, brought up, as Stidham is, he was on W E E I uh, today, and it, you know W E E I is in Boston, so obviously they are close to the Patriots, all that, and they were just asking the question, like, it, it, explain this to us. What's the deal? Uh, Michael said, was alcohol included in his explanation? He said Stidham is more talented than Tua. Tua is a creation of Alabama. You don't think Stidham or Justin Herbert would have set the world on fire if they got to play with four or five? first-round receivers, and two first-round tackles. Uh, He said Sims made similar points when comparing Burrow and Tongavaloa. Burrow made NFL throws, while Tongavaloa's stats are a credit to his receivers. He said the difference between Tua and Joe Burrow when I evaluated them, (laughs) uh, Joe Burrow makes way more high-level NFL-type throws. People not open, protection not good, he still makes a play. You have a hard time finding that on any of Tua's tapes. Uh, I don't give Tua credit when I go, he threw that five-yard slant to a wide-open guy and he ran 80 yards. Whoa, he's so amazing. He's the only guy who can do that. Or like the three receivers on the right all run across the formation and pick for the backfield. The back comes out of the backfield and he throws a four-yard pass to the only guy who it was intended for on the play. And we all go, look at the quarterback play by Tua. He said, that's the perfect example of what you're doing for me there. You're giving all the accolades. Alabama kicks the crap out of everybody for the last 15 years with all these quarterbacks that aren't great. But now you want to tell me too is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I don't agree with that. I will go ahead and tell you this. And I don't know if you agree or not. I think this is one of the laziest takes you could possibly have. And I think that this is just to get uh, news. This is just to get attention. Because there is no way that you could possibly look at tape and not see that Tua is a better quarterback than Jarrett Stidham. The film shows it. Like it's it's not, and not even not even Stidham at Auburn because we understand that he was handcuffed in that Auburn offense. If you go and look at the film from when Stidham was at Baylor, that's more of a comparison to Tua being in Alabama. And Tua is the better quarterback. And I understand Stidham was only a freshman at Baylor, but that was the same kind of offense and whatnot. We get that. The film will tell you, the stats will tell you, everything will tell you, if you're just talking about talent alone, which is what he said. He said Stidham is more talented than Tua Tagovailoa. That's just not true. And there's no possible way that you can explain it other than to say, oh, well, all he does is throw slants. Like, that's just not the case. If you go back and actually watch Tua throw the football, he was the most accurate quarterback in the country. He and Joe Burrow are one and two right there. And they threw guys open, and they went through reads. And the only knock that you could possibly have on Tua is that he had injuries. Like, I, <laughs> tell, give, me, give me your side of this. You know, because I know that I have a little bit of a bias, but I also know to call a spade a spade. And I so think this is crap. There's multiple ways to look at this. First off, if you know Chris Sims at all, Chris Sims has a history of hot takes. 
that are very against the grain. He at once yeah. said that Tom Brady is not in his top five of quarterbacks all time, and he listed off like a bunch of guys that were really good at the time. And he was like, Andrew Luck's going to be better than him. And Ben Roethlis is going to have a better And this was in 2014. It's like, come on, get up, get, get. Like, he likes saying things that gets fan bases pissed off. And he usually goes after large fan bases because, you know, you're a follower of Clay Travis. If you piss off a group of people, all those people start listening to you, reading you, following you. And all your advertisers care is how many eyes are looking at you, how many ears are listening to you. They don't really care if they like you or not. And and so I, I Chris Sims has a history of doing this. One. Two, we're going to look at the word talented. The, there's no way to completely measure the fact that Tua is, is more talented than Stidham or Stidham's more talented than Tua. Our eyes tell us Tua is a better quarterback. We have enough history to see Tua is more talented, quote unquote, than Stidham has ever been. Now, does that mean Tua is going to be a better pro than him? No. We don't know that. We absolutely don't have any history or record of seeing that. Is his argument about Tua flawed in he just has so much talent around him? There is some of that. Because the set, you could say the same for, 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 for Burrow. The difference is, is Burrow was able to always get out of the pocket when nothing is there and make something happen. And Tua rarely did that. Yeah. So that is the difference between Tua and Burrow. I believe that one guy is capable of making something happen, and the other one is if you put him with elite talent, he will get the most out of that elite talent. But if he has average talent, I don't know how great he's going to be. Um, so I do think that criticism is fair. I don't think that criticism is lazy. It, it's just a matter of he likes to do these things to piss people off. This is his go-to thing. Um, he, he's once again, he's been, and the reason he's he's going on Boston media is because he has a huge quote unquote following of Patriot fans. They all hate him because for the last six years, seven years, he's been crapping on Tom Brady, talking about how he's not as great. He's a product of the system. He's this, he's that. And, and, and really it's just, that's the best way to get attention. Pick the biggest dog in the room and go make fun of them. Yeah. And then all of their haters will come to you. And now you get those clicks, you get those follows, you get those views, and you get all that money. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, Michael, uh, he said, was alcohol included in the explanation? Joseph said, can you realistically rank anyone if they haven't seen them play professionally? Uh, no, not really. And then uh, Michael said, Joseph, absolutely not, but they have to get paid. Like, it, it's silly season. You got to talk about something, right? So, summertime, not anything going on. Obviously, we're talking about it. So we're we're bringing more discussion to it. Uh, Damian said, in his defense, Tua is an injury-prone quarterback. Yeah, I, I already said that 100%. Uh, Matt said, Tua played on a team with great guys around him. He did not look like he was having to try that hard in games. Uh, no. I mean, he, he made it look easy. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Matt said he didn't have to scramble for his life all the time or make crazy passes. The line blocked for him, and the receivers were able to get open. Yes, 100%. 100%. And I get that. Um, Damien said, I wonder if he ate the same pizza that Jordan ate. <laughs> uh, Michael said, Sim just trying to be a bigger idiot than his dad. Not sure he can get there. Um, Damien said, he's been listening to the ball family a lot. And then Jose closed out and said, Joe Burrow threw a lot of balls in the air. And I think wide receivers made, uh, amazing plays. There were some yeah. of those, but as a quarterback, you have to do that. Yeah. And you have to put your players in a position to make There's a There's only one separation between Burrow and Tua. And that is simply when... When guys were covered, which was extremely rare for both of them because of the amount of talent they had, when guys were covered and the pocket broke down, they both had great offensive lines. That didn't happen very often either. Burrow was always able, or more times than not, able to get out of the pocket and do something with it. Yes. And Tua really struggled in that time. The problem is, is you don't see that happen, but maybe two or three times a game. Yeah. If And there's some that, games where it didn't happen at all. And and so you you don't know is this a thing where Burrow did it great these six times and bad these two times and so we think he's unbelievable at it and Tua did it bad four times and great two times and so we don't think he he's got six chances to have done it in his whole career yeah because his line's great his receivers are always open so yeah. that I mean you, you can listen I used to believe in the philosophy of taking my quarterback from a small school 
are from a smaller school. I used to always say I never wanted the quarterback from any of these big elite programs because they never knew how to play when they got in trouble. Yeah. Because they always I had the best that. of talent. I do think the game has changed enough to where I disagree with that. But, you know, I don't know. There's still – I mean, to this moment right now, Patrick Mahomes is still the best quarterback in football, okay? And, and he went to Texas Tech where it was tough to play. Yeah. It was not easy to come by wins. He didn't have great wide receiver talent. He didn't have great offensive line. He had a great offensive scheme, but he didn't have any other talent around him. He was it. Yeah, he, he was able to make plays with guys that that, that, that used to be my not a lot of guys that are playing in the in the league right now. Yeah, I looked at Drew Brees and thought the same thing. This dude was elite at Purdue. He's got to be great. Aaron Rodgers, this guy was great at Cal. Got to be great. Like, I used to think that. I do think elite-level football teams are getting better. Yes. The Ohio State quarterbacks that used to flame out in the NFL, the Alabama quarterbacks used to flame out in the NFL, the LSU quarterbacks used to flame out in the NFL. Those guys are not flaming out anymore. No, because the offenses have changed. I mean, yeah, it's, th- th- those teams have completely changed. Now, all of those advantages that the smaller schools had, uh, the bigger schools have, have taken them. You used to just well, be able I to beat teams. I think the competition that they're playing, the thing that these kids are playing at an elite level from the time they're in junior high. Yeah, no, and that's right. the difference. While they might not struggle a lot at college, they faced adversity in high school. They've been reading defenses the way you never read defenses in high school before. 100%. So they know what they're doing. The intelligent level of the game is so much different. And, and, and it's, so it's year-round now. And, and they have specialized yeah. quarterback coaches, et cetera, that teach that, them this that, stuff. That, yeah. we, we just live in a different world to where, not that those smaller school guys can't be great still, I no longer am looking there for my quarterback. Yeah, you're uh, you're right. Uh, Joseph Gomez jumped in and said, when is Chris making a cameo on HGTV's hometown? They have redone half the houses in Mississippi. You got the call? Yeah, I kind of wish I could get those guys cheese, man. <laughs> if they got a little bit closer up north, I'd be I'd be hitting them up to do the floors. There you go. Uh, Michael said, that whiskey looks a little light, Gary. Uh, I mean, it's almost gone now. And, and, yeah, I had three ice cubes that all melted in it. So, I mean, what do you want me to do? It's a hot day in Mississippi, guys. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, there were three big ass ice cubes, and now they're gone. Like, what you want me to do, man? Uh, Damien said, "I can see him being better than Trubisky, but not Tua." Uh, and then Matt responded to that, and said, "The quarterback for the University of Montana School for Blind Women is better than Trubisky." Uh, <laughs> you watch Trubisky any come any out and beat Bowles this year. Like, go oh, out, yeah. watch Trubisky end up winning that job and and looking good and just making all gonna happen. Fools. That's just like, not going to happen. Ugh. Uh, Damien said, only because Mahomes won a Super Bowl, uh, that doesn't really make him a great quarterback. Oh. Uh, <laughs> if Mahomes didn't Damien. win that Super Bowl, he is still the best quarterback in football. Damien, man, come on now. That's a tough uh, take, man. It's a tough take. Yeah. I got to know who you think the best quarterback in football is. Uh, Michael said, knocking a quarterback for playing with talented guys is a lazy analysis. Yes, 100%. No, I, do, I do agree with Gary. The take is lazy. The take is strictly to get clicks. It is not just clicks. It is strictly to go after the massively large Alabama fan base to get all those Alabama boys to click on it, watch his videos, listen to his radio shows, follow him on Twitter so they can hate on him, and his advertisers say, holy shit, this guy has grown his audience over the last three months. Uh, who? Uh, Danny Cannell. Danny Cannell is, is Danny Cannell is also very much in this same realm. They make a lot of money being the heel. Let's see. Danny Cannell on Twitter. I'm just curious because he works for CBS now. He, he got let go by ESPN. He moved to Sirius Satellite, and then he got picked up by CBS. And the reason he got picked up by CBS, here, he's got 335,000 Twitter followers. And that's just like one microcosm. I bet like over 150 of those are SEC fans that, that are just want to hate on his ass. Yeah. Now, I if unfollowed him years if ago. If he didn't take shots and pick on the largest fan bases in the country – then then he would lose half his followers overnight. Oh, 100%. 100%. So, I mean, that's that's really all he's known for. Like, he's yeah. not really known for analysis. And the downside is, is advertisers don't realize that half of those people listening to those guys are never going to listen to them to buy any product they want. Yeah. I used to be the asshole that if, somebody, if I was hate listening to someone and I heard them advertising for something – 
and I needed that product, I found the competitor of that product and bought it, regardless of how good it was or not. There's Didn't a lot care. more people like that than you think. But I'm not buying what those bastards are selling because that guy's a jerk to me. Yeah. And, and you know, that somehow I wish there was a way advertisers could realize what your audience actually is. Yeah. No, absolutely. And and there's no way to. I mean, there's no way. No, no, there's all not. you can they measure just, is really engagement. They, they use the clicks and they use the views and they use the listens and downloads. And that's it. Now you're, and those uh, guys right. get a bunch of them because uh, everybody in Alabama is listening to it right now. Michael said, I'm a Denver guy, and I even give Mahomes credit. Matt said, Danny Cannell looks like he's trying to launder money from his legal owl smuggling operation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Joseph Gomez said, Foles over under five games before he gets hurt. Injuries have held him back the last few years. Uh, I'll take the over on that. I'll take the, I'll over. Take the over on that. I think last five year was games a fluke. Lot. Yeah, la- last year was a fluke. Like I, I don't know if hurt. you give me eight out of taking it, but I'll take over five. Yeah, I, I mean, I could see him playing at least six. Uh, he hasn't lost many years because of injuries. He no. lost those playing just playing time because he was the backup and took the starting role. Yeah. Last year was kind of the anomaly. Uh, when he when he left Philly the first time, he just he just got beat out. Like yeah, he just injured. wasn't good enough to be the starter. Yeah. When that he got 